So Will Smith's got a new movie coming out. It's called Gemini Man. It's out in October. It's about Will Smith as an aging assassin who has to fight a younger, more ruthless clone of himself. The trailer came out recently and a lot of people got a really 90s action movie vibe, which kind of makes sense because Gemini Man is a 90s action movie. It's just been stuck in development hell since 1997. It's rewind time. Yeah. Gemini Man was first pitched to Disney's Touchstone Pictures in 1997 by Darren Lemke. Disney liked the pitch about the dual assassins, the older and the younger clone, and they bought it. And then they brought on Tony Scott to direct and Don Murphy to produce it. Don Murphy, by the way, super interesting producer. He bought the Natural Born Killers screenplay when Quentin Tarantino was a total unknown. And then in 2003, he bought the rights to Transformers when that nostalgia market didn't really exist. And then once the film was actually up and running, he turned his personal website into this open forum where fans could just be like, hey, I reckon that Optimus Prime needs to be voiced by the original voice actor. Or, hey, I don't like women, so RC shouldn't be in this movie. And he would actually respond and engage with the fans and it really influenced the final film. But none of that really has anything to do with Gemini Man. I just think it's kind of cool. So Disney are on board and they get their VFX team, The Secret Lab, onto the task of accurately de-aging an A-list actor because they always wanted one person to play both the assassin and the younger clone. The Secret Lab really put in some effort on this. They did a lot of tests, but it was 1997. So the results are a little bit horrifying. So by the year 2000, the project's been renamed Gemini. They've dropped the man and there's a script written by Darren Lemke. Although there's reports that before the film goes into production, there's going to be a punch up draft written by Stephen Rival and Christopher Wilkinson, the guys who wrote Ali starring Will Smith. There's also a rumor going around that the movie's going to be directed by Shakar Kapoor, who did Elizabeth, which feels like an odd match. And his name is normally left off the list of directors who've been attached to this project. So it's safe to say that that was more of a rumor than a fact. The 2000 draft is very 2000. Alex, the assassin, works for this Orwellian government called the administration. And while he's being hunted down by his younger clone, whose name is Rye, he spends most of the movie hiding out with a single mum and her seven-year-old son. I like Shrek. That was really scary. Harrison Ford, Nicolas Cage and Mel Gibson are all rumoured to be the lead in the movie, although the actual attachment of them really varies. Harrison Ford was asked in an interview whether he was attached to the film and he'd literally never heard of it, but Mel Gibson was formally approached and money was the issue. He wanted more than Disney were willing to pay because it was 2000 and it was still okay to cast Mel Gibson in things. Anyway, the project had been in development for about three years at this point, and with the script finally finished, they could really fast track it into production. In 2001, Jonathan Hensley was brought on to do a page one rewrite of Gemini Man. He took out the futuristic setting, and while he kept the core concept of the film, he also literally didn't refer to previous drafts while he was writing. And he took home $1.75 million for the rewrite, so good on him. Anyway, the film is pretty much ready to go into production. In 2007, David Benioff came on board to do a page one rewrite of Gemini Man. You might recognize his name. He's one of the co-creators of Game of Thrones, but in 2007, his biggest credit was Troy. Yeah, that Troy. Patrickus, my cousin. <laughs> Anyway, Benioff was hand-selected by Jerry Bruckheimer, who'd come officially on board to Gemini Man. He'd been rumored on and off to be attached to the movie since it was first pitched, but he was on board now, so was Benioff. Benioff's draft made the main character an NSA agent rather than a secret Orwellian government assassin, and Benioff took home $2 million for his work. And in 2008, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button comes out, which gives you an idea of how much technology had changed since the project's initial pitch. In 2009, Curtis Hansen was attached to direct Gemini Man using the Benioff script. And I don't know, nothing happened. The movie just, it just didn't happen. In 2012, Joe Carnahan, who would later go on to direct The Grey, pitched to direct Gemini Man. We know this because he posted his pitch sizzle reel online, where he was angling to get Clint Eastwood for the lead role. Hello. Hello. 
A lot of publications will list Carnahan as one of the directors who was attached to direct Gemini Man, but so far as I can tell, he was only ever pitching for it. Same goes for Clint Eastwood. I don't think he was ever formally attached to the film. I think he was just a name that was thrown around. Also, at some point between 2007 and 2016, Billy Ray, Brian Hegeland, and Andrew Nichols all write drafts of the script, but fuck me if you can find the original source for them. They just show up in the list of people who've written this movie. Hegeland was a mate of Hanson's. Maybe, maybe he did a draft then. Also, Billy Ray is one of the final credited screenwriters, so I'm gonna guess his draft was recent, but I, I got nothing. Also, on an unrelated note, in 2012, Looper was released. In 2016, Skydance picked up Gemini Man from Touchstone, and they went full steam ahead. Jerry Bruckheimer was still attached, so was Don Murphy, and they got Ang Lee on board to direct. And unlike every other director who's been attached to the movie, he directed it. Will Smith was cast, and in 2018, cameras rolled on Gemini Man. And because it was Ang Lee, they rolled in 120 frames per second. That's, that's why some of the shots in the trailer look odd. <laughs> Throughout the long, long years of Gemini Man being in development, technology was often cited as a reason for the film to stop and start. It was really hard to de-age an actor to the point where they could play both the lead and the antagonist of a movie like this. But the movie was in development for so long that if you'd cloned Will Smith in 1997 and raised that clone from child to adult with the sole purpose of them playing the clone of Will Smith in this movie, they'd be the right age to play the clone of Will Smith in this movie. And I, I think you know where I'm going with this. They could have just cast Demir Dijuibe. I mean, he can already do a flawless Will Smith impression, he's the right age, and he could have wrapped all of his dialogue. We missed out. Also, Jaden Smith was born in 1998.